Once upon a time, in 1922, Harold L. Hamilton created the Electromotive Engineering Corporation, a company that would become one of the largest and most successful locomotive builders in North America. In the past 100 years, it has built thousands of locomotives in dozens of different types, from the small gasoline electric passenger rail cars to the most powerful diesel freight haulers in the world. While no longer the number one builder, the Electromotive Diesel, widely known as EMD, is still a very important competitor today in keeping the railroads moving across the United States, Canada, and many other countries around the globe. Despite its changing leaderships from General Motors to Caterpillar, EMD never stops playing a vital role in making more reliable and fuel-efficient locomotives that comply with the highest standards of safety and exhaust emissions reduction. Join me, Brian LaRosa, as we learn the Ten Commandments of Being a Good Locomotive Builder by exploring the history of EMD in its first century. Each commandment will cover 10 years of the company's highlights and its greatest achievements to illustrate the evolving technology that is essential to the growingly competitive railroad industry. So come along and see lots of colorful photos of locomotives as you listen to the story of Electromotive. Commandment number one. Thou shalt start thy business with gas-powered rail cars. One day, in the city of Cleveland, Ohio, the Electromotive Engineering Corporation, retitled as the Electromotive Company, or EMC, was born and raised by two co-founders, Harold Hamilton and Paul Turner. The initial goal was to meet the demands of short-distance passenger rail as the continuing alternative to automotive traffic, so the company decided to install mechanical and electrical equipment into passenger cars, usually in their combine coach baggage form. The Winton Engine Company, located in the same city as EMC, provided the gasoline engines, while General Electric, which later became another large locomotive builder, offered the electrical parts. It wasn't until 1924 when the very first electromotive product, numbered M300, was delivered to the Chicago Great Western Railway. Because EMC only had its corporate offices and supply warehouses at that time, it had a contract with various coach builders, such as the St. Louis Car Company, which assembled the M300 with its combine coach design, Winton's 175 horsepower distillate engine, and the GE Electricals. In 1930, automobile manufacturer General Motors of Detroit, Michigan, announced the acquisition of EMC, as well as its regular engine supplier, Winton. This event happened significantly one year after the stock market crash caused the Great Depression to begin. For that reason, the demand for gas electric rail cars had declined, but the Electromotive Corporation, renamed by GM, continued to build the so-called doodlebugs until 1936. During its first eight years as an independent company, EMC delivered over 700 of these motorized passenger coaches even before the takeover. Commandment number two. Thou shalt make a very fast streamlined train. Until the 1930s, the Electromotive did not apply any of Winton's diesel engines to the Doodlebug products. After purchasing the two companies, however, General Motors decided to create a diesel that can produce a higher power output at a lighter weight. This led to a two-cycle design as opposed to a four-cycle engine. Winton used to manufacture the latter type. Developed by Charles Kettering, the new engine was named the Winton 201 series, which initially had eight cylinders to produce 600 horsepower and made its first public appearance in 1933. The Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad chose the production 201A diesel for a streamlined stainless steel train to be assembled by the Edward G. Budd Manufacturing Company. 
On the other hand, the Union Pacific Railroad also needed a lightweight aerodynamic passenger train. In an effort to be the first to introduce a streamliner, the UP refused to wait for the 201A that was still in the design process. In February 1934, the Union Pacific M10,000 was inaugurated. It was America's first streamliner propelled by an internal combustion, combustion engine, which was a 12-cylinder Winton distillate engine rated at 600 horsepower. With its lightweight aluminum body, the Pullman-built M10,000 could reach its speed of 110 miles per hour. Two months later, the Bud Company of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, completed the country's next streamliner, the Burlington Zephyr, and delivered it to the CB&Q Railroad. Fitted with the now available Winton 201A, the Zephyr became the first diesel-powered mainline train. The very next month, this streamliner was assigned a special tour from Denver, Colorado to Chicago, Illinois. Thanks to its high speed, the trip took just over 13 hours. Streamliners were designed to increase average speeds and to help American railroads maximize their revenues so they can stay in business during the Depression. One of the main problems in a lot of articulated train sets was the lack of flexibility, especially with the semi-permanent coupling system. The solution was to build an 1800 horsepower box cab diesel locomotive with standard knuckle couplers for compatibility with any pieces of rolling stock. In 1935, the Electromotive Corporation constructed three passenger box cabs, two demonstrator units, and one for the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. All were assembled at the General Electric Locomotive Factory in Erie, Pennsylvania and each of them were equipped with a pair of 900 horsepower 12-cylinder 201A engines. Also built in the same location were two of EMC's first end cab switchers, which were delivered to the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad. Meanwhile, another two EMC box cabs were assembled by the St. Louis Car Company for the Santa Fe Railway. By the next year, Electromotive officially introduced its first major locomotive factory in LaGrange, Illinois, a southwestern suburb of Chicago. Because many railroads started ordering large numbers of diesels for yard switching duties, the LaGrange plant began production with switchers. As a result, a Santa Fe SC model number 2301 was the first locomotive ever made at that facility. The EMC box cabs were the forerunners to the streamlined EA cab units, which were built for the B&O in 1937. The other two similar models were the E1 for the Santa Fe and the E2 for the Union Pacific. These locomotives became known as E units and each had a pair of Winton diesel engines to produce 1800 horsepower, just like the box cabs. They also rode on two new six-wheel truck types called the Blomberg truck. Not long after the first three E-units debuted, Electromotive had to make a new engine design to solve problems that occurred in the Winton 201A. The successor was named the 567, whose designation referred to the displacement of 567 cubic inches per cylinder at 12 cylinders, the 567 diesel produced 1,000 horsepower, so the first users were the double-engined E3, E4, E5, and E6, all of which had 2,000 horsepower and Blomberg trucks. By the end of the 1930s, many railroads were seeking to dieselize their heavy mainline freight services. In response, the Electromotive Corporation constructed a diesel demonstrator set consisting of four separate locomotives, two A units and two cabless B units. 
Because of its massive 5,400 horsepower rating, the set was designated as the FT, with the T representing half of the power, 2,700 from two units. In either case, each individual unit was equipped with a 1,350 horsepower, 16-cylinder, 567 engine. Described as the diesel that did it, the FT, number 103, traveled through 35 states in less than one year to promote the best product intended for freight duty. Externally, the locomotives featured the four-wheeled version of the Blomberg truck and a completely different front-end design nicknamed the Bulldog Nose. It sharply contrasted with the slant nose that was last used by the passenger duty E6. Number 103 was the pilot model of what became the F unit series. Eventually, the FT began full production, and the Santa Fe was the first railroad to purchase the F unit of any kind. In early 1941, EMC and Winton were consolidated into General Motors Electromotive Division, EMD. Number 3. Thou shalt continue locomotive production responsibly. The Pearl Harbor attack of December 1941 caused the United States to join the Allied forces of World War II. Consequently, the U.S. government's War Production Board imposed restrictions on many manufacturers to supply essential materials for the nation's military. The same thing was true for locomotive builders, including Electromotive. While steam locomotives were still being mass-produced, most diesels were strictly forbidden from being built for railroad use. Instead, EMD's engines were necessary for submarines. In fact, the original Winton 201 was initially intended for marine applications. Despite those wartime limitations, the WPB gave EMD permission to resume production of the FT exclusively for mainline freight duty in 1943. Neither the passenger nor switching locomotives were being built at this time. When the war ended two years later, so did the manufacturing restrictions, and the railroads were facing a bigger opportunity. Let the dieselization begin! A lot of railroad historians use the term first generation for diesels that began to replace steam by the late 1940s. Of course, there were some diesels built before the Second World War, but they couldn't sufficiently dominate the entire railroad industry. It's interesting to note that dieselization coincided with the increase in U.S. human population during the post-war years so there was a baby boom in both people and locomotives. In 1945, EMD debuted two new models, the 2,000 horsepower E7 and the 1,500 horsepower F3. Both were built with the Bulldog nose, which became standard on all post-war E and F units. When it comes to export locomotives, EMD started selling its own brand of diesels to foreign countries in 1946. South of the border, Mexico received a fleet of units in the form of the short-lived F2 type. Five years later, Australia was the company's first customer across the seas and took delivery of a special F3 fleet. In 1947, General Motors launched a demonstration train called Train of Tomorrow, powered by an E7. As a similar case to the FT number 103, this train toured across the U.S. to represent the dieselization of passenger rail in addition to freight operations. As railroads ordered more and more diesel locomotives, the LaGrange factory, also known as Plant 1, was running out of manufacturing space. In an effort to deliver the products as quickly as possible, EMD used a former Cleveland diesel facility 
which was interestingly located in the same place where Electromotive was born. Designated as Plant 3, it was reserved mostly for switchers as well as the newly designed general purpose hood units to be assembled. Plant 2 was a Pullman facility in the south side of Chicago and was intended for subassembly work, including the fabrication of E and F unit cabs. Production at Plant 3 only lasted between 1948 and 1954, but Plant 2 continued to serve EMD until the 1980s. The F3 model was eventually supplanted by the 1500 horsepower F7 which turned out to be the best seller of all F-unit models. It was also the first type to include a passenger variant named the FP-7. Altogether, over 4,200 units were built in both freight and passenger versions. Shortly after the F-7's debut, the Electromotive introduced its first true diesel hood unit, or road switcher, the four-axle general-purpose GP7, also nicknamed the Jeep. Road switchers have better rearward visibility and cost less to manufacture than the streamlined cab units. Despite the absence of a covered wagon appearance, the GP7 was mechanically and electrically identical to the F7 using the same 567 diesel engine and Blomberg trucks. In 1950, the Electromotive's first Canadian locomotive factory was to be open in London, Ontario. It was named General Motors Diesel Limited, GMD, later known as Diesel Division. The first locomotive built in London was a GP7 No. 71 for the Toronto, Hamilton, and Buffalo Railway. Number 4. Thou shalt put out the fires of the last iron horses. By the mid-1950s, Electromotive effectively became the top diesel locomotive builder due to such high-selling models as the GP7 and its direct successor, the 1,750 horsepower GP9. The latter had way more units built than the former, in 1952, EMD's first six-axle hood unit was the Special Duty Series SD7. While the E-Series cab units were built with six-wheel trucks, they only had four motors, two per truck. In contrast, the SD7 was the first EMD product to feature six motors, one for every axle, as well as a high-adhesion truck design called the flexicoil. The main benefit of this type was to provide higher tractive effort than previous EMD locomotives, so six-motor diesels would become more useful by the next decade. The Norfolk and Western Railway, which ordered its first GP9s in 1955, was the last large railroad to begin retirement of steam locomotives, including including those built by its own shops in Roanoke, Virginia. As you've seen in the second commandment, virtually all of the electromotive-powered streamlined trains were built in the 1930s. After World War II, however, the airline industry became more commercially available, and many railroads were losing the popularity of their great passenger trains. One solution was the development of the aero train led by the, the 1200 horsepower lightweight LWT-12 locomotive. Introduced in 1956, the aero train featured special coaches whose designs were derived from buses built by General Motors. The nose of the power car probably resembled a DeSoto automobile of the same year. While EMD was still producing its first-generation diesels, the company was in the process of engineering more powerful locomotives that would eventually commence the second generation. Among the newest models of the late 50s were 
the 2000 horsepower GP20 with four axles, and the 2400 horsepower SD24 with six axles. The most important feature of both types was the turbocharger, which eliminates the need to resize the engine while increasing the power output. As we move into the 1960s, the first generation locomotives were being phased out of the electromotive catalog. While production of the GP9 was about to end, it was the first EMD model available with a low short hood option for increased visibility on a road switcher. In recent years, some railroads rebuilt their Jeeps with low noses. Those include the GP7, all of which were originally delivered with high short hoods. The final F unit was number 2059, one of the New Haven Railroad's unique dual-mode FL9 locomotives. These passenger diesels were built with a four-wheel front truck and a six-wheel rear truck, as well as special equipment for straight electric operation in the New York area. In 1961, General Electric officially joined the mainline diesel market and would gradually become the arch-rival of an electromotive. GE started with its 2,500 horsepower locomotive, the Universal Series U25B. In response, EMD designed the GP30 to produce 250 horses more than the GP20, but 250 less than the GE U25. The GP30 is best known for the, the nearly unmistakable appearance of its roofline with a transitional cab style. Number 5. Thou shalt be able to build more powerful diesels. A couple of years after the GP30's debut, EMD was able to copy GE's 2500 horsepower rating with its next two models, the GP35 and its six-motor brother, the SD35. Both locomotives were the first EMD products to include a revamped cab design with a flat roof and sloped edges. The Spartan cab, as it was nicknamed, became a standard feature on all subsequent narrow-nose diesel diesels from that builder. Another model of the 35 series was created to mount two separate diesel engines on a single locomotive frame. Although EMD had made double-engine locomotives before, especially the popular E-units, the increased size and horsepower of each prime mover forced the company to make the frame longer than average. This led to the introduction of the 5,000 horsepower 8-axle DD35, which rode on a pair, special pair of 8-wheel trucks, as what the DD designates. The type was initially available as a cabless booster unit, but soon the Union Pacific Railroad asked EMD to build some units with cabs. These were designated as DD-35A. The entire 35 series indicated the final usage of the 567 diesel engine because it was no longer able to reach more than 2,500 horses. In 1964, four years after the last F unit, a Union Pacific E9 number 914 represented the finale of the whole cab unit production by Electromotive. Hood units had effectively replaced these streamlined diesels in the builder's catalog, but the E and F units are still considered to be fan favorites today. At the same time, EMD was testing the next engine design, the 645. Using the same designation system, the new prime mover has a cylinder displacement of 645 cubic inches. Additionally, the company developed the alternating current transmission system involving the alternator and rectifier for conversion to direct current for the traction motors. This was done to eradicate the difficulty of mounting excessively large DC generators into the locomotives. By 1966, EMD officially introduced the first 
645 powered diesel locomotives in many different options. The primary models within this line are the GP40 and the SD40, both of which have turbocharged 16 cylinder engines to produce 3,000 horsepower. However, for those railroads who desire less powerful diesels, EMD Catalog 2 models, the 2,000 horsepower GP38 and SD38 with non turbo V16 prime movers. The SW1500 is a switcher equipped with a 1500 horsepower V12. The largest version of the 645 engine had 20 cylinders and was designed for the 3600 horsepower turbocharge SD45. EMD's first production road switcher with flared radiators at the rear. Not long after the SD45 came out, the Santa Fe Railway wanted a full-width passenger variant of a hood unit for all-weather protection as well as for cosmetic purposes. EMD combined the V20 diesel and a fully enclosed cow body into what became the FP45. This boxy locomotive was the first to reuse the letter F, which now became a designation for all modern EMD full-width cowl units. The Santa Fe and the Great Northern also received the freight-only F45 locomotives, which are substantially shorter in length than the, the passenger FP units. In 1969, Electromotive built what is considered to be the largest diesel electric locomotive in the world, the DDA 40X. It is the builder's second double engine hood unit with eight axles for the Union Pacific. What makes the DD 40 physically the largest is its massive 98 foot long car body. Since the DD 35 was powered by two 567 engines, the successor featured a pair of 645 prime movers, each rated at 3,300 horsepower. Altogether, the combined output is a whopping 6,600 horsepower. Interestingly, the DD-40s were constructed 100 years after the completion of America's first transcontinental railroad. That's why they're nicknamed Centennials, and they were also numbered in the 6900 series. Using the cab design similar to the F-45 cow locomotives, the DD-40s represented the first application of a wide nose to a road switcher. Number 6. Thou shalt make some changes in thy existing product line. As it reached age 50 in 1972, Electromotive developed a new locomotive product line that would incorporate some major internal enhancements over the original 645 line while retaining the same horsepower options and, to some extent, the same exterior designs. Known as the Dash 2, the advanced program represented higher reliability with the help of the most sophisticated technology housed in electronic circuit boards rather than wires, relays, or any electrical clutter. In fact, the Dash 2 systems were essentially experimented on the Union Pacific's gigantic DDA 40X locomotives. To make things even simpler, the designation system only added the Dash 2 as the suffix to a predecessor model. For example, the four axle GP38 and GP40 were succeeded by the GP38 Dash 2 and GP40 Dash 2. Although some Dash 2 models like these externally resemble the previous types, others look rather different, especially those with six axles. The most reliable and best-selling locomotive of the 1970s was the SD40-2, which rides on a pair of next-generation trucks, the High Traction HTC. While the original SD40 featured the 3,000 horsepower V16 engine, its direct successor was sold even better with the same prime mover on board. That amount of power output was just the right size for mainline freight duty on most railroads. 
The six-wheel HTC trucks are some of the main components that make the SD40-2 look non-identical to the former model. In 1974, EMD introduced the multi-purpose MP15 switcher as a successor to the SW1500. It was built in three different variations. The MP15DC with a conventional generator, the MP15AC with the alternator rectifier system, which is standard on all Dash 2 models, and the turbocharged MP15T. Both the DC and AC versions are equipped with 12 cylinder engines rated at 1500 horsepower, but the T model was built with a turbo V8 to produce the same output in fewer cylinders. However, the low demand for diesel switchers by the 1980s caused the MP15 series to be the final chapter of EMD's switcher business. When it comes to passenger services, the five-year-old Amtrak asked for a four-axle locomotive in 1976 to replace the short-lived, malfunctioned SDP-40F fleet derived from the popular SD40-2 and to more effectively complete retirement of the previously owned E and F units. Using the same mechanical equipment from the GP40-2, the locomotive was called the F40PH. In addition to its cow body, the F40 features the head-end power alternator driven by the prime mover to supply electricity for the train. Head-end power is a more reliable method than a steam generator that had been used on earlier EMD passenger diesels, up to and including the SDP-40F. Because of its excellent performance on not only Amtrak, but also many commuter carriers, as well as Via Rail Canada, the F40PH is surely another fan-favorite engine in the history of passenger trains. While Electromotive has built almost exclusively diesel locomotives, the 1973 fuel oil crisis motivated some railroads to propose electrification. Due to the lack of previous experience with electrics, EMD had to contract with a Swedish company called ASEA to use the technology for that purpose. The first two prototype electrics were the GM6C, number 1975, and the GM-10B, number 1976, both of which were hood units assembled by EMD and equipped with the electrical components supplied by ASEA. They were briefly demonstrated on Conrail's electrified lines that were originally installed by the Pennsylvania Railroad. The most famous electric locomotive built by EMD is the AEM-7, first used by Amtrak in 1980 to replace its aging fleet of former Pennsylvania GG1s and the problematic E60s from General Electric. Like the prototype units, the AEM-7 featured ASEA equipment, but its steel body was prefabricated by the Bud Company. Three years later, Another electric locomotive was designed by General Motors Diesel Division of Canada in response to a special order from the British Columbia Railway. Built as a full-width Cal version of the GM6C, this model was designated as the GF6C and was assigned to haul heavy coal trains through the newly opened Tumbler Ridge Line. By the early 1980s, EMD engineered a more modern locomotive series as a potential successor to the dependable Dash 2. The company launched the GP50 and SD50 to produce 3,500 horsepower and later 3,600 with the 16 cylinder 645 diesel engine. The EMD50 line also incorporated a new control system called Super Series to manage traction and to minimize wheel slip. Unfortunately, both the GP50 and SD50 turned out to be less reliable than the Dash 2 series, primarily due to the 645 engine that reached the practical horsepower limit 
in its existing design. Those problems forced EMD to develop a bigger prime mover that can produce more than 3,600 horses. Number 7. Thou shalt apply computer control to a locomotive. In 1983, two decades after joining the mainline diesel market, General Electric was proclaimed to be the top locomotive builder, making the business more competitive than ever. Electromotive was anxious to release its latest diesel engine, called the 710, by the next year. The first 710 prime movers have 16 cylinders and were installed in the 3,800 horsepower GP60 and SD60 locomotives. At the same time, personal computers became more widely available for many applications, and EMD decided to add a microprocessor control system in its 60 series. Despite its disadvantages, the short-lived Super Series was considered to be the transition between the electronic Dash 2 modules and the microprocessors. The latter are more compact, allowing a substantial reduction in electrical components while increasing reliability. Locomotives equipped with onboard computers are often referred to as third generation diesels. Although the 710 is primarily offered as a V16 engine, a 12 cylinder version was offered for such locomotives as the 3000 horsepower GP59 and its Canadian cow bodied passenger cousin, the F59 PH. The latter featured an isolated head end power diesel engine in order to make the V12 more fuel efficient than the 645 V16 used on the F40 PH. In 1986, the last of the regular SD40-2 locomotives were sold to the National Railways of Mexico. A couple of years later, however, the Canadian Pacific Railway requested a full-width cow model based on its large fleet of 40-2s. General Motors Diesel Division delivered 25 units named the SD40-2F with a wide nose at the front to protect the crew in the event of a collision. These were the very last locomotives of the entire SD40 family, regardless of their body differences. The Canadian Comfort Cab, or North American Safety Cab, was originally designed by the Canadian National Railway and the first GMD product with that feature was the GP38-2W, built in 1973. CN also purchased two GMD cowl unit fleets, the SD50F and SD60F. Back in the United States, Union Pacific acquired the first safety cab units to be operated within that country in 1989, Electromotive came first and delivered the SD60M, which was initially built with a three-piece windshield. This design was soon changed to the more common two-piece windshield that looks similar to the one on the DDA-40X. As railroads began ordering more locomotives from GE, the biggest change was going to happen for the legendary LaGrange, Illinois factory. EMD made the decision in 1988 to relocate all locomotive assembly operations from there to London, Ontario, where its plant was essentially smaller than the original. As a corporate reorganization, the Canadian Diesel Division consolidated with the Electromotive Division to form General Motors Locomotive Group, GMLG, but most railroad fans still call the company EMD. Shortly after UP's acquisition of the first SD60Ms, the Santa Fe Railway received its own safety cab fleet, the four-axle GP60M. It also took delivery of what is considered to be the final fleet of EMD booster units ever built, the GP60B. By the early 1990s, a six-axle locomotive became the standard design for modern diesel-powered freight trains. 
As a result, the GP60 was EMD's last four-axle freight model. A narrow nose type for the Southern Pacific Railroad marked the finale of the entire general purpose line in 1994. Number 8. Thou shalt incorporate alternating current technology. Electromotive concluded its move to the London factory by early 1993, so the very last locomotive assembled in LaGrange was an F40 PHM-2, number 214, for the Chicago area Metra commuter rail system. It was also the final F40 PH model and one of the last 645-powered EMD locomotives. While the London plan effectively became the new place for final assembly, the LaGrange facility continued to be the company's headquarters, as well as the manufacturing space for diesel engines and other locomotive parts. About a year later, EMD introduced another passenger model, the F-59 PHI, a more advanced, streamlined version of the Canadian-designed F-59. The letter I refers to an isolated cab design called Whisper Cab, which debuted on the SD60i freight locomotive. EMD successfully upgraded the 16-cylinder 710 engine from 3,800 to 4,000 horsepower, and the result was the introduction of the safety cab SD70M. Since the 70 series is the first product line to not include a four-axle model, the name Special Duty would now unofficially be retitled as Standard Duty. One of the notable enhancements found on the SD70M are two of the new radial three-axle HTCR trucks containing a special mechanism that allows the first and third axles to self-steer on curves. That reduces friction and wear of the flanges. Simultaneously, the HTCR also has higher adhesion and tractive effort than its predecessor. By the time the SD70M came out, more U.S. railroads gained interest in maximizing collision safety for their freight trains, and the wide nose be design soon became more popular. Despite the revolution of the comfort cab, EMD offered a standard cab SD70 with a now obsolete narrow nose. This model is one of the last conventional low-nose diesel locomotives that were built by the end of the 1990s. The decade was known for one of the most economical and revolutionary railroad innovations, alternating current traction. Compared to direct current traction motors, which have been previously used on a typical diesel-electric locomotive, there are a couple of major advantages that make AC motors more reliable. First of all, they have a higher starting torque, increasing tractive effort and adhesion with the help from the latest truck designs, such as EMD's HTCR. And second of all, AC motors are simpler and more durable in terms of withstanding high current loads at slow speeds because they don't need commutators, brushes, or anything that is susceptible to severe damage in a DC motor. AC motors have existed for decades, but the most feasible method of controlling them is by using a locomotive's onboard computer system. Like their DC counterparts, AC locomotives still have the alternator and rectifier, the biggest difference is the addition of microprocessor-controlled inverters, which send the converted alternating current to the AC traction motors. Most of EMD's AC diesel locomotives contain two inverters, one powering each truck. Let's begin with the prototypes built by Electromotive as early as 1988. The company's first new diesel-electric locomotives, equipped with pre-installed AC motors, were a pair of 3,000-horsepower passenger-duty F69 PHAC units for Amtrak. About three years later, EMD built its first AC freight model called the SD60 MAC, rated at 3,800 horsepower like the DC-motored SD60M. It was also the first unit to be fitted with the HTCR trucks. 
Both the F-69 and the 60 Mac were equipped with the AC technology manufactured by Siemens, a German company. The same thing was true for EMD production diesels during the 1990s. Shortly after testing four of the experimental SD-60 Max, the Burlington Northern Railroad ordered the SD-70 Mac, the first commercially successful AC-motored diesel locomotive in North America. One additional benefit of alternating current traction is the opportunity to design a larger locomotive powered by a single engine rather than double. In other words, an engine that can produce a lot more than 4,000 horsepower. Initially, EMD created a 20-cylinder 710 prime mover for the 5,000 horsepower SD80 Mac that was built only for Conrail. However, in an effort to make a 6,000 horsepower locomotive, the company had to develop what is known to be its first four-cycle diesel engine since the Winton era of the 1930s. Up until the 90s, every electromotive engine between the 201A and the 710 was made as a two-cycle type. As part of its 75th anniversary celebration in 1997, EMD launched its first 6,000 horsepower SD90 Mac painted in a special demonstrator scheme. The prime mover for this locomotive is the 16-cylinder four-cycle 265H with twin turbochargers. Normally, EMD named its two-cycle engines, including the 710, after the cylindrical displacement in cubic inches, but the 265 designation comes from the metric length of each cylinder's bore in millimeters. While the SD90 Mac is the builder's second largest diesel locomotive, measuring 80 feet long, the 265H is by far the most powerful EMD prime mover ever designed. The 90 Mac can do twice as much work as the 3000 horsepower SD40-2. That's a 100% increase in horsepower compared to the two-cycle 645V16. Unfortunately, the SD90 had reliability problems with its unsatisfactory H engine, and North American railroads now preferred to stick with the average power output between 4,000 and 4,400 horses as the modern standard. This is inevitably true to the most recent locomotives available from both Electromotive and General Electric. The 6,000 horsepower race was over. Approaching into the 21st century, EMD received the largest single order ever placed by Union Pacific, 1,000 of the DC Traction SD70Ms. The order was so huge that the builder had to contract with at least two companies, including Super Steel Schenectady of Glenville, New York, and Bombardier Concurril of Mexico, for additional production space. The first of the UP SD-70s were completed at the London factory in 2000. In the same year, back at the LaGrange facility, the abandoned locomotive assembly buildings were dismantled, but the engine factory did play a big role in manufacturing mechanical parts to fulfill Union Pacific's order. Number 9. Thou Shalt Obey New Rules on the first day of 2002, the United States Environmental Protection Agency enforced the Tier 1 exhaust emission standards. Both the SD-70M and SD-70 Mac freight locomotives were successfully compliant with those regulations, as indicated by their flared radiator vents that resemble the ones on the 1960s era SD-45. However, Passenger locomotives that were originally designed in the 90s could not satisfactorily comply with more stringent emission standards, nor could they meet the latest crashworthiness standards of the American Public Transportation Association. These changes made the Electromotive F59 PHI model obsolete. 
although it was considered to be environmentally friendly for the pollution-conscious state of California at the time it was built. While the 710 diesel engine had been upgraded in preparation for the EPA Tier 2 standards, effective January 1, 2005, EMD had to plan a completely new locomotive design that would supplant the original ST70 models. The result was the more enhanced AC traction type called the SD70 ACE, followed by the nearly identical DC traction SD70M-2. In theory, the latter could have been named SD70 DCE to avoid confusion with the 1970s era Dash 2 series. Regardless of their motor differences, both the ACE and M-2 are rated at 4,300 horsepower and were introduced before the Tier 2 regulations became effective. They also inherited larger radiator wings and a radically different cab design from the late phase SD90 Mac. These fourth generation diesels were among the last locomotive products offered by General Motors because it made a decision to exit the locomotive market. In April 2005, two investment companies, Berkshire Partners and Greenbrier Equity Group, purchased the Electromotive Division from GM. The locomotive builder was slightly renamed Electromotive Diesel, but still uses the familiar EMD initials that have existed for a long time since 1941. The year 2008 was notorious for another economic recession in the United States, and General Motors was in danger of bankruptcy. On the other hand, Electromotive, while no longer owned by GM, didn't receive many locomotive orders during that time. In 2010, after being a corporate spinoff for five years, EMD found a new owner and was acquired by Progress Rail, subsidiary of construction machine giant Caterpillar, based in Peoria, Illinois. Interestingly, despite being the new parent company, Caterpillar is three years younger than Electromotive. Shortly after the acquisition, Progress Rail was planning to move locomotive production to a former Westinghouse transformer factory in Muncie, Indiana. It was last occupied by a Swiss-based tech company called ABB. One of the first locomotives assembled at the newly opened Muncie plant is a Ferromex SD70 Ace number 4092 for Mexico. As AC traction became much more reliable, the last two railroads preferring DC traction were Norfolk Southern and Canadian National, both of which purchased the SD70M-2 units. The DC motor type was eventually phased out of the EMD catalog by the early 20-teens. And now number 10, thou shalt not hesitate to keep being competitive and moving forward. The EPA Tier 3 emission standards went into effect on New Year's Day of 2012, and the Electromotive SD70 ACE was slightly upgraded with the Tier 3 version of the 710 diesel engine. The next month, Progress Rail made the decision to end locomotive production at the 62-year-old London, Ontario plant in favor of the Muncie, Indiana facility. While the change had doomed the Canadian workforce, the good news was the return of American manufacturing labor for EMD. The last locomotive assembled in London was a Union Pacific SD70 Ace number 8773, and the plant was permanently closed. Although the two-cycle 710 engine has complied with the Tier 3 requirements, it failed to be prepared for the Tier 4 regulations that would take effect on January 1, 2015. To remedy this issue, EMD was forced to design yet another locomotive and its prime mover. In October 2015, the builder officially introduced the 4,400 horsepower SD70 ACE-T4, which is equipped with a 12-cylinder, 4-cycle, 
1010J diesel engine. As mentioned in the 8th commandment, the 6,000 horsepower 265H V16 was not quite as reliable as the 710, but it actually became the basis for the 1010J. In fact, the H engine has a 1,010 cubic inch displacement per cylinder, so it could have been theoretically called the 1010H without the bore length designation. In order to reduce as many emissions as possible, the new J engine features a multi-stage turbocharger and exhaust gas recirculation. Other notable features of the SD70 ACE T4 include the HTCR 6 trucks and single axle control, where each of the six inverters is connected to one traction motor rather than the whole truck. Unlike the original SD70 ACE, the T4 locomotive debuted nine months after the first day of the Tier 4 requirements. Union Pacific was the first railroad to receive these low emission EMD production freight units in early 2017. Another Tier 4 model designed by Progress Rail is the AC Traction Passenger Duty F125. Electromotive publicly announced its re-entry into the passenger locomotive market in 2013, 12 years after the last F59 PHI was built. The F125 has a top speed of 125 miles per hour and represents the first usage of a Caterpillar diesel engine for a new EMD locomotive. The 20-cylinder four-cycle C175 prime mover can produce up to 4,700 horsepower. Instead of exhaust gas recirculation, this engine contains an after-treatment system that utilizes a tank full of diesel exhaust fluid to reduce polluting emissions. Vossel Rail, a Spanish builder, provided the monocoque body shell and high-speed trucks for the EMD F-125. A series of inverters send electricity for the four individually controlled AC traction motors, as well as head-end power for the train. A total of 40 locomotives were purchased by the Los Angeles area Metrolink commuter rail system, and the first several units were completed in 2016. Like the older F-59, the F-125 was designed specifically for California, which once again chooses the most eco-friendly locomotives available in North America. In 2018, there was another big change for to the good old LaGrange, Illinois plant that had kept building EMD engines for the last two decades. Progress Rail wanted to transplant machinery production to Winston-Salem, North Carolina to basically reduce labor costs. This became effective within the next three years. As of this video you're watching, LaGrange still has an office building, but the main headquarters of Progress Rail is located in Albertville, Alabama. The final history point we will discuss in the, the Ten Commandments of Electromotive is the future products of the 100-year-old company. Progress Rail is in the process of engineering the first non-diesel locomotives since the age of ASEA electrics to release zero emissions and to reduce the dangers of climate change in the world. In 2020, the company began its environmental initiative with a six-axle battery electric switcher named the Joule after the unit of energy measurement. The first Joule was assembled in Brazil but the Pacific Harbor Line is anticipated to be the first American user of the EMD battery locomotive. The second method of zero emissions technology for railroad use is hydrogen fuel cell power. Interestingly, the Canadian Pacific Railway will put out its first hydrogen locomotive, which is rebuilt from one of the old GMD SD40-2F cow diesels. But that's another story. As for Progress Rail, Caterpillar will be teaming up with Chevron to create the next zero-emissions locomotive. Throughout its first century, 
The electromotive diesel has courageously survived through many difficult times, from the Great Depression and World War II to the ongoing coronavirus disease pandemic, with the help from General Motors and Caterpillar. EMD has made lots of locomotives that many railroad workers, as well as train spotters, have been very fond of. We hope this largely respected builder will continue to compete in the business and therefore will live happily ever after. The end. Well, not exactly. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed what makes the century old Electromotive an extremely triumphant diesel locomotive builder, albeit number two on the list. Here's a well-written bibliography for further reading about EMD. Whether you're a train spotter or railroad modeler, it's good to know some important history of locomotive brands like this. I'd like to give special credit to Trains Magazine's EMD at 100 special issue, published by Kalmbach Media. Additionally, there will be a companion DVD that is scheduled for release in late March of 2022 coming soon from Kalmbach Hobby Store. This DVD will include a virtual tour of the Muncie, Indiana locomotive factory that you're not so likely to visit. Until then, happy 100th birthday to Electromotive Diesel. I'm Brian LaRosa. Thank you for watching.